and i hope you can see uh, the slides yeah okay so i start with a few things that uh, last year i have two publications these two publications and uh, the first one is in a category and the journal is technological forecasting and social change but this journal is for forecasting basically the theme is to forecast the technology how the technology will move in the future so the theme we have to understand the theme of the journal so that's why we send this paper uh, that if blockchain technology comes in india then how banking sector will be benefit benefited from it the second paper i uh, published in global business review it is a uh, uh, abdc paper and so the, the the theme of this paper is do local investors exhibit smart value investment the theme is that whether uh, because when we compare the local investors versus foreign investors can we say because of the uh, better knowledge of the country better knowledge of the countries so should they behave value investment uh, investors like or not and last week this is just last week 9th february i got this acceptance and uh, this uh, and believe me when you got this this kind of mail because in a year you got this kind of mail only twice or thrice <laughs> and uh, when you got this kind of mail and uh, congratulations on the acceptance of article so they published our our paper and the name of the journal is journal of public affairs so it is a uh, abdc b category journal and uh, the theme is the prioritizing the factors determining the quality of higher education in institution in india is a fuzzy logic based paper okay and believe me when you got this mail which you uh, got twice or thrice in a year maximum because if you target a category or a, a star category so you have to work you have to work very very hard on that so um, so the mail when you got when you got this mail so i i can tell you that for next 7 days you will be in seventh sky <laughs> because um, getting at this kind of mail is very it is dream of every phd scholar so um, because i am going to start my session by uh, telling you that i am in the practice uh, so i am publishing and uh, even at this time at least three or four papers are in b category or a category uh, review okay so now after uh, telling you this i hope you will listen me carefully so let's move to the so i i selected a 10 tips to uh, 10 tips for the research scholar and i made this slide just last yesterday for focused for this workshop okay now the first question first thing i want to say that what is your research topic because i got a lot of uh, calls from the scholars and they say me sir our paper was rejected by the journal and we sent three in three journals and all the three journals were rejected rejected my paper then i said okay uh, send me the paper let 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 me see the topic and the uh, uh, the research question you raised in, in, in your paper so when i saw this uh, saw their topic the topic is like the employee engagement practices in india are mac i said that who who which companies is employing the employee retention strategy sir they want they are thinking how to throw the employees and you are talking about employee retention strategy this this is not practically uh, in india this is this is not a practical topic so first of all you have to search a topic which is relevant the the searching of the relevant topic is very very important nowadays for example now nowadays i am working on the topic i'm telling you how to make the online teaching interesting this is the research topic which on which i am working so how this how this online teaching will change the face of the education this is the topic which on, uh, on which i am working so i'm just telling you the topic which is related to the teaching and another topic on which uh, uh, in which i am uh, we are also working that how the emerging economies will change the face of the world because nowadays you know that there are many countries which are growing very fast like india and we want to know that how the how these these countries these emerging countries will change the face of the world and uh, in 2030 after 10 years you you, you will i am 100% sure the face of the world will change the power of the power will shift from one country to another country 20 years back nobody asked india but now when you go to any other country they will give respect proper respect to you so a uh, research topic must be relevant now the question is that many ask me sir how can we how can we find out the relevant topic so it is a, it is again a very difficult task how can we find out the relevant topic so i always say that 
if you are not reading the newspapers you cannot find out the relevant topic because the relevant topic are where they are in the newspaper they are in the news so go uh, read the news and which newspaper not the local, local newspaper i am telling you the go to the business newspapers like uh, just read the headlines of the economic times just read the heading of the uh, the business center right because last time last year uh, we read a news that uh, the bloomberg made a uh, geopolitical index so it is a big thing so we came to know that the bloomberg uh, make a index which is on geopolitical so then we then the idea comes to us that how the geopolitical index is influencing the economic development or the stock market or the exchange rate so ideas basically come from the newspaper i'm telling you and uh, because you will get the latest information from there so topic should be relevant and when when somebody asks me sir uh, we have to select a topic for for phd how we can find out the topic then i tell you a, a concept that the the concept name is start the conservation conserve uh, right start the conversation conversation sorry conversation so start the conversation so what is the meaning of start the conversation I, this is a technical um, word so I'll, I'll let me explain the concept basically imagine that you are going to a party or or a conference or a, or a, any any gathering and you found that uh, the top uh, uh, or the most brilliant people are there talking to each other because it happens that uh, people uh, talk in a group and there are many groups right so when you go to a conference when you go to a party you know that there are many groups so first of all what do you do if you want to grow what you should do you should identify the best of the group then you go to then you what you, what you can do you can go to the you go to the you approach that group and whenever you approach that group you cannot just start talking to them first of all you should listen what about what they are talking right so first of all you have to listen that what actually what about they are talking to each other and if you have a strong point then you can start with that strong point if you want to be the part of that group so this process this practice is known as start the conversation now most of the indians so they did a simple mistake uh, they approach to the group and talk rubbish right and in their talk the that group is not interested right now i am telling you what so most of the indians i found that they write a paper and they send to the different journals this is like, just like that you are talk, you are you start talking rubbish in front of a very intelligent group so uh, you we should not do that so what we should do we should listen to the group carefully think about it and make a point then present my point to them and if your point is relevant they will listen you and they will invite you to join that group right so basically first of all now think what i am saying i am saying that first of all identify the good journals right but first of all identify the good journals of which you you want to become a part so you should start with identifying the good journals and then at least read their three latest issues open their three latest issues and see what they are publishing so try to understand that on what topics they are publishing nowadays and after uh, identifying uh, the topics on which they are publishing so then you then ideas research idea comes to you and you can you can decide your phd topic from there you can decide the research topic from there and many research idea may come from this practice right so uh, this is the best uh, best method of identifying the research topic so i call it the start the conversation and your topic should be com- contemporary your sh- your topic should not be very old and uh, the now actually you have to think also the mindset of the publisher because now we are having a very reputed publisher inter science publisher then we have emerald very reputed then Thom- uh, then um, we are having the wiley right then taylor and francis so these publishers are very uh, reputed publishers so we have to understand their psychology what they think what they want actually <laughs> now i am telling you the process uh, uh, what is the process of publication so when you send your paper for publication the some clerical staff will receive that paper and that clerical staff will uh, do some checking testing like for example whether this paper is uh, so first of all she read the uh, uh, theme your t- title 
then abstract, then introduction. And I, I'm, I'm telling you that 90% of the paper are rejected at, the, at that moment. Because uh, if you're not, if, if because if you're not, if uh, your paper is not able to convince the research about the research problem, it is rejected, 90% of the paper rejected by first view. And this is called desk rejection. So um, your paper at least must have the capability to pass through this gate. Now, after uh, the clerk thought that the topic is valid, the research problem is valid, the research question is valid, let's go to the next step. Now, what is the next step? The next step is that uh, the he or she will check the plagiarism. So whether the paper is having plagiarism or not, and you cannot believe, they will not accept the paper if it is having the plagiarism more than 5%. So 5%, maximum 5% plagiarism uh, uh, they allow. Uh, in India, you know that you see cap, uh, cap at 10%, but most of the publishers, they don't have 10% cap. They have only 5% or 0%. And some publishers say that we want 0% plagiarism. It's especially A star or A, A category journals. Even 5% is very high for them because they want original papers, not the copied papers. So uh, after these two, and get right crosses these two testings you must took, you must have your paper must have the capability to cross these two gates number one your uh, title should be very very attractive second it should not have plagiarism then they then this go to the editor desk so editor now the editor who is the, who is responsible for deciding the reviewers of the paper so if editor convinces he will send the paper to two or three reviewers um, in most of the cases, see, uh, the paper is sent to three reviewers. So then they will wait. The, the reviewers comment. So what reviewers say? And you have to understand who are these reviewers. These reviewers are the expert of that area. Tori, I'm talking about the area. So these reviewers are the expert of these areas. So they are the expert of, uh, suppose you, you are writing a paper on human resource or marketing. So they are the marketing experts. They are the human resource experts. So most 90% of the reviewers are the theory experts, not the statistician. They're not a statistician. They are the theory expert, right? So uh, you can see that most of the reviews are related to the theory. They are not related to the statistics. So statistics comes after the theory is coming first. And uh, even these reviewers are so smart, they, they know that you are not uh, you are not giving the references of the important papers, right? So if they, if they, they read your paper completely, and if they find out that the paper is good, it is having the citation potential. Citation potential means the topic is relevant. The other people will also cite this paper. Then they can recommend your paper for publication. Otherwise, they will also reject. So, uh, and every editor want to publish only those papers where in future the citation potential is high. So you have to think, you have to think from that perspective whether the topic is relevant in the future or, or not. So this is again important because there are many topics which are irrelevant nowadays. And if you write a paper on irrelevant topic, because I found that most of the uh, students are still doing the PhD on the very old topics like financial literacy, <laughs> financial literacy, corporate finance, employee engagement, talent management practices, and so uh, consumer behavior. So these are very out outdated topics. You have to think something new. So, and a breakthrough paper. So then uh, the, the title should be breakthrough. Breakthrough means it will change your, change the topic entirely like for example in, in today's context if you write something on uh, uh, like uh, online which is a breakthrough event in in our lives right similarly in economics you can you can, you can know that in, in marketing there are so many things are coming now like social media influencing it is it is a new area which is growing very fast then digital digital marketing it is growing very fast nowadays everybody is talking about data science artificial intelligence so these are the breakthrough topics and robotics Robotics is the future of the world. Robot, anything if you can convert into robot, right? So uh, artificial. This is this is a part of artificial intelligence. So every everybody is talking about these rather than you are talking on the theory of consumer behavior, theory of planned behavior. So these are very outdated topics. So your topic should be breakthrough. And I'm telling you, you cannot decide any breakthrough topic if you are not reading the newspapers. I'm telling you. So no research paper, no uh, no researcher can identify the good topics if he is, he is not reading the newspapers. Okay, so your topic should be futuristic, feasible, and 
Okay, now the last point I'm making here is business idea because when I uh, meet the industry people, because I spent 20 years in, in academics, now now I'm in, uh, in industry and I have a lot of discussion with the industry people. So then uh, when I talk to them, so they change my mindset. Why? Because they say that nowadays, you you if you think about the business, right? Now we are having Oyo, Ola, right? There are so many companies like this and we are having uh, Cred, we are having Baiju's, Baiju, Right. And all these entrepreneurs were the student or the just human being, the normal human being like us just 10 years back. So just 10 years back, they, 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 they were human being and they got a business idea and now they are the millionaires. Right. So I also say that business idea comes only when your mind is open. So the way we are looking for the research idea, the same way the businessman is looking for a business idea. So business idea and research idea is, is on the same thing. The only difference is that the uh, academician, when academician think on a business idea, he will write a paper. And uh, from businessman point of view, if they have some good business idea, they want to take, they want to make money out of it. So this is the only difference between a business idea and the research idea. So now I want to club both of them because uh, everybody say that India cannot be innovative hub, right? I India never was an innovative hub and will not be innovative hub because still we are not not a single indian company is able to make a platform comparable with zoom you, you can think on that right we are not able to uh, make a platform and none of the indian company is able to make a platform even after two years or uh, when online teaching starts like any platform comparable to zoom comparable to google meet so this is the this is very unfortunate. So I am saying that we are we are having a lot of mind in India, but the problem is that we are not thinking about some new things. We are copying from others. So this is not good. So a research idea, research topic like a business idea. You think something new, and write on that. Then then other you can publish your paper in A category, A star category, and all other categories. Okay. Now the the first tip, uh, the second tip is that like whenever you see a cricket match, right. In a cricket match, the most important part is played by opening batsman. And uh, uh, nowadays, you know that uh, Rohit Sharma, when, when we send Rohit Sharma for uh, opening batsman, they, we know that we are very confident that we will we will win the match. And similarly, we know that the so we can understand the importance of the opening batsman. Now, in in when you write a paper, when you write a paper, your your introduction part, your introduction paragraph, or the first paragraph in the introduction is actually the opening batsman. So if you can if you can if you read a good research paper in any A B C category paper journal, you can see that the the most attractive part of the paper is the first paragraph. So I call it opening batsman. So we have to decide uh, this opening batsman very carefully. So I will show you some of the papers and I will explain what I am saying. Okay. Uh, like you can see that the, the you, if you read the first paragraph of this uh, paper, there are few things you can observe. Like in the first line, in the first paragraph, they uh, mention the all the breakthrough papers in this topic on this topic. So uh, whenever I read this first line of the paper, I was very impressed. So uh, even there are many many examples I put here. The first paragraph of all these papers are written very carefully, very carefully in very attractive manner. So I, uh, even this is a Emerald paper. So uh, you will just, I'm just telling you that whenever you read, it, read the first line of, a, of the paper or first paragraph of the paper, they incorporated all the breakthrough papers of, about the topic. And which makes the which makes the paper so interesting that everybody want to read it. And I'm telling you, this this concept I'm teaching everywhere. But but even after that, I do not found that uh, the scholars are able to re uh, write these lines, these paragraphs. Because you have to think a lot. You have to uh, think a lot. So what should what papers I should incorporate in the first paragraph? So your first paragraph is like an opening batsman. And uh, so I put the five or six uh, slides on that. And you just see, this is the Elsevier paper, right? And uh, my paper is also published in Elsevier, Social Change. And believe me, we spend many weeks in drafting the first paragraph. The, the first paragraph is, is like, 
is like anything the, the, the most important it's like a opening batsman if if you, if you send a very poor batsman in opening you, your whole match will fail so you you have to design your first paragraph very attractive it is like a makeup makeup you have to do a lot of makeup to uh, to uh, uh, feel attractive right okay so and i met many reviewers of the uh, these papers because when i was working with imt gaze was the uh, the institute sent us to attend many lectures how to write a research paper and uh, one thing that everybody uh, say there that when you send a paper for publication the most of the reviewers uh, on the first hand they read your introduction and then conclusion and if your introduction and conclusion and are good so the the paper will go to the reviewer so you can you can cross the first two gates only when your introduction and conclusion are fine otherwise you will get the dissertation so at this time i can claim that uh, my so because i'm getting a lot of papers uh, to the research scholars so i i can claim that i have it now i have reached at a 100% probability that your paper will not be rejected at the first gate so think on this and uh, now at least you after understanding all these concept you should have confidence that your paper uh, will not reject it from the desk okay so this these are some of the papers i just put in this slide to show that your introduction portion is very important so this introduction portion is like a opening batsman and it basically if you see carefully the first paragraph it is having the literature support literature support that your topic is is uh, is having many literature support because in all the first paragraph you have seen some citations the citation of the authors which write a breakthrough paper and basically on what basis we decided that which author we should put in the first paragraph the simple uh, concept we follow here those papers which are having very high citation high citation means more than 1000 2000 citations we put those papers in the first paragraph and to show that the the topic which i am raising is very popular and supported by the different authors and literature support should be there in the first paragraph because most of the people like when i when i uh, when i talk to the indian authors indian authors mean those who are doing the phds so uh, actually i conducted this test many times i asked them to write a introduction so you can you can also try this test so when i when i uh, read their introduction i uh, see that they the these or these uh, research scholars start writing in like that this topic is very very important <laughs> this india is a emerging country are ye to sabhi ko pata hai everybody knows this so why you are starting your paper like this so i always say that don't write that my topic is important right never you should not write like this in, in the paper you should not say that uh, india is very emerging country right? everybody know this so why you are why you put these lines in the introduction so you should, you rather you put the uh, literature support that your topic is relevant you should not you should not say that my topic is very relevant no you should you should put some literature support to show that your topic is important okay so literature support should be there the story should not be there so you should not start with your paper with the story you should start, you should start with the paper, your paper with the literature proper literature support proper theoretical background you have proper background so you can also add some data set or you can also uh, in, input some or put some the statement made by some uh, good businessman also like nowadays elon musk is uh, making many statements and you can you can incorporate the statement by mukesh ambani or some uh, top businessman in your introduction uh, to prove that your topic is relevant and you have to also uh, indicate that why this topic is important need of the study what is the need of the study right so um, you have to basically this is called marketing of the topic marketing of the topic you have to market that this topic is good by proper justification by proper literature support and uh, in the introduction part this is a opening paragraph and introduction so whenever you read the introduction the introduction also must have two things research gap and the research questions so you must have clarity on the research gap research gap and research question so i will discuss much in more detail 
uh, what is the research gap and what is the research question. So I am showing you some of the introduction part of different papers just to show what I am saying. You can relate to that. Uh, in in this introduction, this is a Elsevier paper, Science Direct, and there are so many literature support provided by the author, and uh, the and they also say that the objective is to, of this paper. You can see the last line. The objective of this paper is this. So you have to put the objective or research question even in the first paragraph. Because most of the time I found that uh, the research scholars write the story in the first part and objective they take in the research methodology. No. So I'm showing you many papers where uh, we, we explain the research question even in the first introduction, introduction part. Now, this is another paper I'm showing you. Uh, so you can see that the in this paper, there are many literature support. Because they have misconception, many scholars I found they have misconception that the, uh, the literature support should not come in the introduction. No, it will come. Why? Because they are proving that your topic is relevant. You can you can give weight by quoting these uh, these authors, right? So uh, now you can see that this the third paragraph. To this end, the purpose of this research. Now they are explaining the objective. They are, they, are, they are explaining the objective here. The purpose of this research is to analyze. So the objective itself comes in the introduction part. And uh, I attended many uh, PhD presentations and I found that the most of the scholars present uh, start their presentation from the stories. That this is the introduction, this is the literature review, this is the need of the study. I always uh, say the research scholar, don't start your presentation with the stories. We are having a very bad habit of uh, telling the stories. You should start with your work, then tell other work. So the main the main topic of the presentation should be in the first slide because in now nowadays nobody have time to read your stories. Nobody have time to read to listen your stories. No, so write your objective here because objective come first in the second or first paragraph. So you, you should start with why what I am going to do in this paper. And uh, uh, then you can give the support that why this topic is important, why it is needed, that, that is a different thing. But what you are going to do, uh, it may be in the form of objective or it may be in the form of research question that comes in only in the introduction part. So this is another mistake I found that in most of the Indian papers have. So they, they like to uh, mention the research objective in the third portion research design. No, I, I, I always ask them to put in the introduction part. And uh, even in this paper, the, in this paper, we explore the notion. So they, they directly come to the point, right? This is a, again a paper. And you, if you, if you see the first line, uh, right? So in the, even in the first line, they start with the topic. They don't tell any stories and, and anything else. They directly come to the point that in this paper, we are going to do this, that, that's it. And uh, then they tell why we are doing this. So all these things are, because I found that when I compare the style of Emerald and, and Aldevier, so both are the different journals. So I found that in Emerald, Emerald is much, uh, much better, have much better style because in Emerald papers, the authors directly start from the uh, objective. And then they will tell why this topic is important. And in Elsevier, first of all, you tell why this topic is important and then you are telling me this is the objective. So uh, this is the difference I found between Emerald and the Elsevier papers. Uh, I'm not saying it is a rule, but most this is my observation. So, but uh, I like the, uh, the style of Emerald. They directly start with the point that what you are going to do, then they support it. So now the rest of the things are in support. That's why we are doing this study. So again, this paper will therefore first examine. So this is the continuation. And uh, yeah, this is now, now look at this paper as they were. First of all, they will tell the background. And then uh, in the second paragraph, they start the objective. The objective of this paper is to re-examine. So you can see that uh, the, uh, the paper first define the uh, background. The first, the, the first paragraph includes the background that why this paper is important, why this topic is important. Like you can see that the nexus of exchange rate and price, oil prices have drawn much academic interest. Oh, yeah, puri, the whole, the whole uh, literature support they provide. And then they say that now, now they are telling that what is their objective. The objective of this paper 
is to re-examine the causal relationship between the oil price and the exchange rate in the emerging economies like India. So, see the style, the style of the intro, writing the introduction. And believe me, if your introduction is because uh, I'm telling you, last last uh, um, last year, I met a very good uh, author. He is now working with Australia. Earlier, he was in India. So he he told me that because now nowadays we are having uh, he is having a lot of publication, and he say that uh, in Australian um, in the universities and even U.S. universities. You will get promotion only when you are when you are having uh, at least three B publication or uh, two A publication. So if anybody is uh, want to promote from assistant professor to associate professor, the simple condition they put is that if you publish uh, two papers in uh, A category or three papers in B category, then uh, you can think about the uh, promotion. Otherwise, not. So they have to do a lot of work in in, in the research paper writing. So now he told me that we sp I spent well, he spent. Uh, one month in drafting the introduction part only because he say that if your paper is having the best introduction then the chance of rejection is less because uh, if if anybody of you got the rejection of your paper so i always recommend that first of all you read your introduction and and i can say that your introduction is not very attractive and not very attractive and irrelevant also so uh, introduction is the most important part which decides whether your paper is accepted or whether your paper is rejected okay now let's move to the uh, so introduction part in, in the introduction you have to you must answer two main questions in the introduction you must answer these two questions why this study is required to fill the gap in knowledge that currently exists so you have to address some here somehow research gap and why why this why does this gap need filling? So two things: how your paper is filling the gap, and why it is needed. So you have to uh, address this question in the, in the in the introduction, right? Okay. Now another thing which I want to explain here. So this is my points. <laughs> so what needs to be included in the introduction introduction portion, which is the most important part of the research paper. Uh, introduction consists of the background information. You see that um, in most of the papers, they quoted the literature support, the background about the topic being studied. So first, then you have to decide, you have to address that the, what is the rationale of undertaking this study? Why you are taking, why you are writing this paper? So in this case, you have to somehow uh, talk about the filling a gap. So how your paper is filling a gap, which is not there, which is, which is existing. Some important references. Literature support, some important differences to preliminary work or closely related papers appearing elsewhere. And a, a, some you can also add some clarification of important terms. So maybe you are um, speaking about some technical terms, so you can give the clarification or definitions, some or one or two definitions you can put. And a review of related studies in which you give a brief but incisive analysis of work that heavily concerned your study, or actually, uh, uh, you can you can quote some similar kind of studies which are the pioneer studies or the breakthrough studies in your area to show the power or the weight of your paper. So the I, I hope you are now having some idea about to uh, about the introduction importance of the introduction of the research paper. And if you are not getting anything, so I'm simply say that uh, find out or download the ten research papers in a star category. Read the introduction only. So for one month, read only the introduction of research papers. If you do that, if you can do that. So I hope after this exercise, you will understand the importance of the introduction of the research paper. And I hope after this, after listening by this lecture, your paper will not get death rejected. I can, I can guarantee you that if you do this exercise, if you read the introduction of 25 papers or which are published in A star or A category, your paper will not be death rejected after this. Okay, now I'm uh, moving to the third tip. Now, actually, I found that research gap. Research gap is the backbone of the paper. Backbone of the research paper. And uh, I observed that the scholars are not able to find out the good research gap. And they should, they even though uh, do not know how to write the research gap. And it is, it is very surprising. And uh, there is no training which is uh, there, which tells the research scholars that how research gap should be written. In the paper and the in the study, 
So, first of all, I think we should be very, very clear on the research gap. How to write the research gap? Research gap should be addressed in terms of contribution. Like, for example, uh, if somebody say me that uh, I have not, uh, in India, there is no cycle which flies in the sky. Only cycle, right? So there is uh, there is no cycle which can fly in the fly in the air. Then I am asking you, are you making that? So if you are saying that this is a research gap, then my question is that are you making that? Uh, so research gap is not that which is not there in the literature review. Research gap is not that that which is not available in the literature. Rather, it is that which you are completing it. So research gap should be addressed always. Research gap should always addressed in terms of the contribution you are making. So a research gap should be the contribution which you are making and which is not existing. In, if you ask me in simple language, how can I define the research gap? Research can be research gap can be defined as the contribution made by you, which is not there in the existing literature. So it, it should be related to the contribution of the study. And uh, if you ask me that uh, when I saw the literature, when I saw the uh, reviewers comments, most of the time, most of the time, the reviewers make the comment that you, your paper is not having, you are not addressed the research gap properly, or your your research gap is not addressed properly. So this is very common. Research gap. Any any comment on the research gap, I found it is very common in the papers. So I think the scholar should know how to write the research research gap properly. So now research gap. Uh, what is what do we already know? It's not a research gap. We have to find out the knowledge gap. Research gap is something which is a knowledge gap. And uh, you have to think that how I can fill this knowledge gap. Like, for example, nowadays I am working on a paper that how I can, how the online teaching can be make best experience, how online teaching can provide the best learning experience, right? Because teaching in a class is a different thing and teaching in the online is a different thing because I'm not looking at everybody who is participating. I don't even don't know how many students are sitting in my class and how, how many are sleeping and how many are listening to me. So this is a very big challenge, right? And even the recording is also going on. What each, each and everything which I'm speaking is, is recorded. So I am very, very careful that uh, uh, what I'm speaking, right? So now the, the biggest challenge is that how can I make my best lecture uh, best? which give me the best experience. So this is my research topic. And I know that I have, I have not found any paper on this topic. So there's a knowledge gap. And now the question is that, how can I find out this research gap? So now I'm discussing with different people, different uh, professors, different uh, teachers who are doing the online teaching. And now I know that uh, nowadays, the teachers are including the audio files, video files, pictures, and so many things to make the online teaching attractive. So we are, uh, we are arriving at some conclusion. So we are we are now after this lecture after this paper we will we will give you so many tips to the uh, re readers that if you want to create a best learning experience that you can you should add these these, these, these things in the online lecture. So uh, this is just a small example. There are so many other other work is going on, right? So uh, you have to find out how you are fulfilling the gap. So think on these aspects how you are fulfilling the gap. So like that. So research gap, uh, you can see that. So I'm saying this some sentence. Okay, uh, how to identify the research gap? Okay, now so in some cases I found the research gap like this. This is the found you in the paper. You say that this is the finding and this is the gap. So if you if you see the finding one and gap one, the finding means this is the finding. And therefore, the aim of the present study means you are you are explaining the research gap with the contribution in terms of the contribution. So, what contribution you are giving is the, is the research gap. So, because I will uh, provide you this slide, so I hope you can read some of the things which I cannot cover in the session. You we have to read all these things. So, how research? Gap. Hello. You are audible, sir. You are audible. Okay. Great. Uh, so uh, this is the way we can write the research gap. And uh, these are some of the slides. The how to if, if if somebody asks me that how to identify the research gap, so I can say without reading, without reading the good research papers, you cannot identify the research gap. 
So to, uh, if you want to be capable of identifying the research gap, so you have to be very, very uh, alert about the recent changes in the topic, recent changes in the areas. So research gap should be identified for now. Okay, now, now I'm moving to the fourth step. So in the fourth step, I'm saying that I always ask the recommend um, research scholar to make a review bank. Review bank, because uh, whatever uh, we, I, I have seen that most of these scholars, they are, they are having the habit so whenever somebody uh, told them that you are not serious, you are not serious, and if they himself, they themselves feel that I'm not serious, so they start doing downloading the papers. So this is the only activity I found that whenever uh, whenever a scholar uh, feel that he is not serious in the study, so what he uh, what he or she did, he uh, they start downloading the papers from different sources and and think that I have done a lot of work. <laughs> so this is the um, uh, not the right thing. Basically, I always uh, ask the scholar who are at the stage of making their career. So I always say, say them that please start making the review bank. Please start making the review bank and increase your saving in that. Like for example, when we started the uh, career, our bank balance was zero. But slowly and slowly, we put some savings in the bank and uh, we make the wealth. At the same time, right? So we are having a we are having the ideology that at the age of 40 I must have this much amount in my bank. At the age of retirement, I, I must have this much amount in my bank. Similarly, there is a called there is a concept called review bank. Now, what is this review bank? Review bank means uh, whenever you write a paper, whenever you read a paper, put that paper, this is your earning actually. So think when you are reading a paper, this is your earning. So from your earning, you should save something, right? So similarly, I, I, I advise you that uh, if, uh, whenever you read, read a paper, so kindly make a review bank of it. So what is the review bank? So I can take one uh, complete lecture on the review bank because now I'm just giving you a tip. So I'm telling you, I divide the review into four, four categories. So review can be divided into four categories. One is the one is known as bibliometric review. Second is known as systematic review. And third, I call the scale review, and this is meta review. Uh, and whatever I, what, whatever I'm teaching you is not available in any book, any any lecture, anywhere else. This is my experience I'm sharing. Now I'm telling you what is bibliometric review. So we have to uh, uh, find out some information about the research paper. Like for example, uh, what is the citation of this paper? What is the uh, impact factor of the journal in which the paper is published? And what is the indexing of the paper, whether it is ABDC category or whether it is Scopus, SCI or, or any other. So you have to identify many information. So let me, if, if, I, if you ask me that what kind of information we should note down, I'm telling you, author, the country they belong to, their academic association, the year of publication, the name of the journal, the indexing of the journal, the title of the paper, the citations and uh, the citations, number of authors and uh, the impact factor and year of publication like this. So these informations are known as bibliometric review. And then we come to the, so you have to make a Excel file. And this Excel file is basically your review bank. And uh, the second concept is systematic review. In systematic review, I focus on only on three things. The systematic review means uh, hypothesis. So the hypothesis is the main portion of the main, main part of the research paper. So in systematic review, just read the hypothesis of these papers. And find out that which uh, which constructs and variables they are using, and what type of relationship they are finding out. Like uh, note it down these hypotheses that a, a it has an impact on b, b is having impact on c. So make a bank of the hypotheses. So in my area, what are the different hypotheses tested by the different authors? So in systematic review, the most important part is the hypothesis. The second important part is the theoretical background, theoretical model. So what theoretical model they used, what model they tested, and uh, what theories they used to examine the model. So the second thing is the theory and the theoretical models. And the, the third and the last part of systematic review, according to me, is the conclusions they made. So simply uh, go to the conclusion part and write the conclusion of each hypothesis they made. So what is the conclusion for hypothesis number one? What is the conclusion for hypothesis number two? And conclusion for hypothesis number three? So you have to write the three things. So you can make a uh, another notebook or another Excel file. And the name of the file is systematic review. So in systematic review, you have to read three aspects, uh, hypothesis, theoretical models, and contribution. And conclusion, conclusion. 
then we are having the scale review a scale review and where scale review is important so whenever you want to design your questionnaire whenever you want to design your questionnaire you know that a scale review is very important a scale review means what items what is what statement these authors are using to measure their construct so you have to identify the keywords you have to identify the items you have to identify the statements you have to identify the constructs so the uh, after the scale review you are able to identify that what statements items uh, the authors are using to measure what so in a scale review you can also identify that whether they are using five point scale whether they are using six point scale seven point scale which scale they are using so this part comes in the scale review a scale review and uh, then you can also find out the pilot survey uh, what is the result of the pilot survey because pilot survey is also part of the scale review then in the scale review you can also find out the ways of content validity construct validity so how they address the uh, there there are many things in this like uh, how they addressed non respondent bias how they how they addressed uh, uh, pilot survey how they addressed validity part like this so this is scale review so which is about the scale they used and the last part last bank is known as meta review now what is meta review meta review is simply the uh, the review of their findings the statistical findings so it is the it is the bank of the statistical findings of the previous studies like i'm giving you one example like uh, somebody say that x is having impact on y and the correlation between x and y is 0.4 another 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 research scholar say that the x is also found to be have a significant effect on y and the uh, beta is found to be 0.6 so now i am collecting the these statistical figures so meta review is the collection of the statistical figures from these research papers so that you can do a separate analysis on these findings and you can write a meta analysis paper so meta analysis paper is a very good paper very uh, good paper to write and it is a very high potential for publication and uh, so i call this meta analysis so nowadays meta analysis is gaining a lot of popularity and last year i conducted i think more than 10 workshop on the meta analysis and even i am consulting many many hospitals and many other organizations for meta analysis because meta analysis is very popular in hospitals because they want to know that if i give this medicine what is the chance that patient will be okay patient will improve so they find out they read all the previous studies that uh, uh, what are the different chances in different papers so they can find out what is the chance globally so you should do a proper review bank you should make a proper review bank for for the research papers okay so i hope uh, it is clear and uh, in uh, maybe in uh, any other platform i will teach each and everything in detail the five the fifth point is i am taking i telling you the research questions because most of the interviews i attended and uh, uh, we i they were asked me that in the initial days so if if you are doing research what is what are your research questions so what are your research questions so if i ask you that uh, in your research studies what are the research questions right now i have to think that whether these research questions are valid or not whether these research questions are valid or not because most of the time uh, the Uh, the scholars telling me sir my research question is that how the company engages their customers so it is a it is a good such questions but this is theoretically they are not they are not able to relate it with the practice and how the uh, how the company engages their employees uh, so how how what is the financial literacy of the of the people so i am saying that go some uh, add some latest happenings in it right for example if you say uh, how the companies are engaging their employees so if you can add this how can how the companies are taking the use of artificial intelligence in engaging their employees then this is more attractive rather than what you were saying earlier so don't go to the uh, the these ghost topics actually ghost topics are those topics which are there but it is not there in the practical there are many topics which are there in the books but they are not there in the practice so i call i call them ghost topics right these topics are there in the books but when you go to the industry no company is using these these topics the, the, no no company is, is applying these topics in the practical so don't select the ghost topics for the research papers research questions your research question must be very very practical and futuristic so don't uh, go for the ghost topics so okay i i feel you are getting me what i'm uh, tell so research question i'm telling you uh, research a good research questions a good research question 
requires a judgment to be made because uh, whenever you write the conclusion whenever you write the conclusion you must answer that research question so your research question comes in the introduction part and the answer of that research question comes in the conclusion part so uh, requires a judgment to be made so you have to answer it allows for debate between different perspectives because a research question may have different perspective allows for the answer to be in middle ground or synthesis different parameters is simple one idea rather than many can be answered with the with the resources available to the learner in the world really interest the learner so uh, the research questions must be addressed in the introduction part and the answers and the possible solutions of the research questions must come in the conclusion part because i am telling you that reviewers most of the reviewers they find out the research questions from the introduction part and then they find out the answer in the conclusion part even if you write your research question in the introduction part and not explaining them in the conclusion part your paper is not accepted so your research questions or your research objective because in some papers i found they they write the research objective in some question in some papers they find out the research questions so they must be in the introduction part and their answer must be there in the in the uh, conclusion part for example uh, recently one of the scholar put the research questions that what factors influencing the inter entrepreneurial alertness entrepreneurial alertness means uh, how you can find out the opportunities to be an entrepreneur how how you can find out the opportunities to start a new business so how the business idea will come so this was the research question right the uh, it is a very simple question that most of the uh, most of the people ask me that sir i want to start a business but uh, yes some, uh, i am not able to find out that which business i will start so what new uh, so what new idea should come in my mind so then i say so this this is called an entrepreneurial alertness right if you are alert if you have this capability then you can find out the new ideas and new business ideas right but i found uh, so that the, this is the research question so then i ask the research scholar your paper will only be published when your research question is very good but you must answer it you must answer it in the conclusion part and if you are not giving the right answer if you are giving the story if you are only telling the story in the conclusion part even they will not publish your paper so you must find out something new and you must suggest something new to uh, which answer your research questions so this is my point uh, research question must be there in the introduction and answers should comes in the conclusion part so uh, the research question may comes in the form of why how what whether and all and uh, these are some of the research questions so then six objectives objectives uh, is very uh, objective should be written very carefully so this is also important for thesis this is also important for the research paper uh, objectives also comes in the first part and uh, i already discussed that part so okay now the selection of the journal Se seventh tip the selection of the journal because everybody asks me most of the research scholars ask me sir and we have written the paper we write the paper now in which journal we we should publish it right so this is like that you are having a garbage and you are finding out the dust bin uh, you are you are throwing your paper no no this is not the right approach so first of all you should you should find out the journal make your paper because every journal is having separate uh, different formats you have to write your paper in that format you have to follow their their format and whenever you open the website of a journal there is a author guidelines uh, the the every journal every good journal have the proper author guidelines so they tell the author that whenever you write a paper if you are writing a paper for us then you have to follow the the, the instructions so uh, my uh, my suggestion at this time is that first of all find out the good journal where you want to publish a paper read their guidelines properly and then start writing uh, and thinking uh, first of all think that whether your title is contributing the theme of the journal or not because if your theme is different journal theme is different they will not publish your paper because they are very very specific that uh, they will publish only those papers which are according to their themes right if some if some paper is focused on uh, behavioral finance they will publish only your behavioral finance if if some paper is on social marketing they, they will publish only social marketing right so uh, first of all uh, if you have theme in your idea some theme research theme in your mind then find out a suitable journal first read the author guidelines and then start writing a paper 
don't uh, so 90 percent of the scholars i found that they first write a paper and then find out in which journal we, we should publish no first of all you should find the journal and how can find out the journal because uh, you nowadays you know that we are having a list easily available in the internet uh, if you can find out abdc listed journals the list is there in the in the website so from that list you can find out the journal even we are we are following basically four lists in india abdc list which is very popular most of the business schools are using the ABDC list. It's focus most of the engineering uh, in, engineering students and uh, technical side. They are they are adopting the Scopus and SCI. Then we are having a UGC care list. Uh, but nowadays UGC care list also included the Scopus ABDC journals. So and one thing I always suggest to these scholars that you must have all the these lists in the desktop. You must have all the lists in the desktop uh, saved in the desktop. So whenever you want to see it. You just open the Excel file, find out the journal and uh, start, right? So a selection of the journal and uh, I always uh, re recommend that you must have the list of 10 journals because whenever somebody starts the PhD, I always say that you must have 10 journals in, in your list, wish list. You can say it is a wish list that I will publish my paper in these journals. And uh, write the name of the journals in some blackboard or some whiteboard, whatever you are using. So that you can see these uh, journals each and every day, uh, right? And you you remember every day that uh, my target to pu publish my papers in these journals only, and they should be they should belong to A category, A star category, or B category, whatever be, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and no, uh, apart from the journals. Apart from the journals, I always say that you must have a list of top 10 authors in your area, top 10 journals in your, in your area, and top 10 papers of your area, and uh, uh, like that. So you must have a list of top 10 authors, top 10 journals. And believe me, uh, these top 10 authors, if you have the list of top 10 authors, so kindly contact them and say them, hello, I'm also doing the research in, the, in your area, and please guide us. And I want to contribute. Uh, I want to contribute something in this area. Please guide me, and uh, please uh, join me as a co-author. Write a paper and send to them, and say that please be the co-author in this paper and uh, kindly publish. To help me in publishing this paper. So they will help you a lot. Even I'm telling you, one of my friend, uh, uh, he approaches the Daniel Goldman. Daniel Goldman written the paper on emotional book a book on emotional intelligence. So he is able to uh, connect him. And the person is helping him in publishing the papers. So you can think that when uh, the, these kind of people are your co-authors, you can imagine that how uh, branded you are now. So this is my another tip that you must have the list of co-authors, authors, or best authors in your area. Then ABTC, the list of best journals like this. Okay, so I hope you got my point. And after that, Research design. The research design is having a lot of, uh, it is a favorite topic for most of the uh, reviewers. I have seen that most of the reviewers ask you to describe that how you select the participant, so how you define your, define your, the uh, sampling design, the, the, what is your sampling frame, uh, what is the result of pilot testing, how you, uh, how you design the questionnaire. And it is one of the weakness of Indian authors that they are not giving more focus on the research design. They are giving more focus to the, the research papers or statistics. They are giving more focus to the statistics, but they're not giving more focus on the research design. This is uh, the most weakest area of the research scholars. So I always suggest uh, you to read the research design of best of the papers. And you can uh, you must have in your bank at least ten best papers who write the research design in the best way, and you must have the ten at least ten papers with the best research design. And you have to select that those papers. And uh, whenever you write the paper, follow the research design from there. There, and in the research design, because most of the most of the authors they address so many things in the research design. They address the even non-respondent bias. They they address the sampling design. They address the uh, missing data. Like so many things, they address here. 
So research design is one thing which I think the scholar should be very, very careful and uh, should have expertise in writing the research design. And it's then a ninth point. Uh, I'm not writing anything here because there are thousands of the statistical methods available in this uh, nowadays. Even I have heard so many new techniques, new concepts, which nobody in India knows. Right. So like mix, uh, mixed level modeling. And uh, there are many other techniques which are not very popular in India, like mic math, mic math technology. So uh, even in finance, I know that uh, we are not even uh, very, very comfortable in uh, the, the some of the technologies, right? But so uh, I suggest you to attend many workshops to be familiar with the different statistical methods. And uh, there are so many trainings are going on nowadays and these trainings are online trainings and uh, you must know which... Uh, and whenever you want to attend any training program, so read the profile of the uh, resource person. Whether the resource person is capable of uh, contributing the knowledge or not. Because nowadays what happens is that everybody is, studying, uh, is organizing their training programs and they are only wasting the time and money of others. So you should be very, very careful in finding out. Even, even I am telling you that once I attended the training program in IIT and I was surprised to know that the, the faculty come and show the PPT and go away. So sometimes the big names are there in the as a resource person, but they are not interested in contributing or uh, sharing their knowledge. So they are, they come with the PPT and they just read the PPT and go away. So don't be aware about these uh, these kind of professors, and uh, so find out some somebody who is willing to contribute, willing to teach you actually. So but uh, you should you should spend your time because uh, I think attending a workshop is not a time wasting. It is it is basically an investment. And uh, if uh, so, if you have opportunity to to um, attend the training programs of good attend good training programs, so I suggest you to attend training programs. Right. So this is an investment. Don't think it is a it is an expense. It is an investment. So attend as many as training program you can on the statistical method because if you are not having comfort comfort on the statistical methods, you cannot write a good paper. This is unfortunately it is true. Like I'm also conducting many training programs and uh, I can say that you can attend those. So don't take it otherwise. Uh, okay, now the last tip I'm giving you is the conclusion. So uh, as, as I give more focus on the uh, the uh, introduction part, so with the same thing I'm saying that conclusion is as equally as important as introduction. If you're not concluding anything, if you're not concluding anything in your paper, it is a waste, it is a garbage. So, concluding the conclusions are very important, and your paper must come out with some strong conclusions. Otherwise, it is a waste. If you are not having good conclusions, your paper is not good. So, whenever somebody asks me, sir, I can uh, can I send this paper for publication? So then, I simply ask two things. So, what is the problem you are raising, and what is the conclusion you are making? If a problem is good, so there is no solution, then it is a waste. And, uh, and without any good problem, conclusion cannot come. Simply, if, uh, if you want to have good conclusion, you must have the good question first. Then conclusion should be should have significant and uh, some breakthrough conclusions. The conclusions which can change the world. So which can change the knowledge. So that kind of conclusions is required. Not... And you can you can uh, achieve these conclusions. This is like a uh, moti. So you have to give it. You have to go uh, into the deep of the sea to find out these. So um, in English, I don't know what moti is known as. So you have to find out these pearls, 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 right? So this is like conclusion. Conclusion are the pearls which you have, you can find out only by diving deep in the sea. And uh, so there are some tips. You must have some visual boards. Visual boards means uh, you must have a board, some, something like that, where you write your topic and uh, journals and all, so that you can see every day. And it uh, slowly and slowly, it, it touches your subconscious mind. And when something touches your subconscious mind, it means it will come out, definitely, someday. Uh, so this is my tip. And another tip is, and believe me, the good research papers will make you a personal brand. You will make it, it is a long-term investment. And it is it is global acceptance, and uh, it is a relation of self. You will feel very happy, and it is a proof of your intelligence and wisdom. And you will be known as a subject expert or the area super expert. You will get a lot of consulting consulting projects from your projects from your research papers. 
you can go to a lot of consultancy reward and recognition in your life if you want all these things you must write some good papers and uh, this is the time of action and uh, we identify the best so these are the uh, suggestions i already gave you and final suggestion i'm giving you that invest in people you you must find out the good so good people in your life as a teamwork as a co-authors if you can find out the good co-authors you can write good papers otherwise not because in paper three three type of people are required number one those who are very good in english so you also need people who are very good in english because indian english is very poor so normally we uh, we take the professional help from from some editors who can edit our paper and change the language so in for a good paper you must know somebody who is having very good english number two somebody who is very uh, good in statistics because it may not be possible for you to learn each and every statistic so i think you should you should know somebody who is very good in statistics and the third third requirement is that somebody who is very good in strong good in theory concept so if these three people uh, mix meet each other and uh, start writing a paper uh, somebody who is having a very good english somebody who is having a very good statistics and somebody who is having a very good command on the theory then the combination of three will make a, a miracle will make a a uh, paper which can publish in a category a star category and, and all these things so uh, i think from my side it's over uh, it is 11:30 11:29 and i stop i am not wasting much of your time so thank you from my side i hope i enlighten you so thanks thank you very much uh, thank you dr uh, ajay chauhan sir uh, there is one question if you would like to take uh, like one of the participants would like to uh, know a little bit more about meta review meta review uh, basically me meta review is the analysis of the analysis because whenever we do the analysis on the analysis of other people so for that you need to uh, you need to write their analysis so what are the findings of these people other people you have to note down their their findings and findings may be in the form of uh, the correlation findings may be in the form of the beta impact regression for finding may be in the form of uh, the risk ratio or ratio standardized mean differences so there are many findings so you have to note down the findings of others and then you can club them and do the analysis on that so you can write a meta meta review meta paper meta analysis paper so meta right. review is the collection of the findings of others the statistical findings of others but right. thank you sir uh, i think we have time for a couple of more question uh, if any of the participants would like to ask to uh, dr ajay chawhan and uh, later on of course he has mentioned his uh, email id and his phone number you can always post a question to him uh, and uh, he is very cooperative i know so he will be he will definitely help you uh, any other question for a now couple of question yeah uh, hello sir good morning yeah good morning hello ajay sir hello sir uh, just can you uh, give some example or so some research paper uh, where we are supposed to put our research question what is the right place Uh, in this slide, I uh, pasted the at least uh, five research papers. Even in this slide, I show you yeah. the beginning. Yeah. So they are the best examples. And research I, question: so, Where we should put our research question? Research question is. you can put only in the introduction part. Okay. Yeah. In the introduction part, and I I showed you clearly that how the research question in, uh, was written in the, these these portions, these research papers. Okay. And uh, this basically the problem is that my area is finance and quantitatives. and your area may be marketing your area may no, be no i am in economics. finance only sir <laughs> okay okay so if you belong to finance then uh, the the there is a different type of research questions because most of the research questions are not about the theory the, uh, nowadays the finance is moving to the mathematics side okay so most of the journals are uh, focusing modeling. only on the modeling part so in, in, in now in finance the research question are of different types okay so okay. this is the uh, point Thank you, sir. Some of the participants are requesting your PPT. If you allow us to send them, I will uh, share with Tripti, madam. Okay. Uh, I have the mail of Tripti, madam, and I, I will share uh, with with her just after the session. Right. Thank you. Sir, so, one uh, one request. Uh, I attended your Stata workshop. Uh, can you have it in the morning hours? Because the the time you conducted your workshop was quite uh, like in the evening always. So if it oh. can be in the morning, we can attend. basically most of the scholars uh, they are working somewhere most of the faculty members they are working somewhere so they are free only in the evening this is the uh, issue whenever i conducted the training program in the morning so i found very very less participant 
or maybe uh, afternoon session uh, two to four yeah something like that before five if you can have maybe yeah, I, i can try that time yeah yes sir okay thank you thank you uh right so uh, also uh, we would like to have your feedback uh, on today's session and then later on we will share the findings with the dr ajay chuhan uh, somebody has raised the hand yes sir sir i want to know the difference between research questions and objectives research question is in the question form so actually first of all first of all whenever you get the research idea it this idea comes in the question form right okay. like how uh, like what impact these emerging economy have in the future how what is the different characteristics of the social media influencers right okay. and uh, why the indian companies are going abroad for merger acquisition so so first of all whenever your idea comes idea comes in the form of question okay then these question will lead to the objectives okay so question come first and then you frame the objectives according to the research question So this is defense. Thank you. Uh, there is one more question, but I think uh, it is not. Uh, I mean, we don't have enough time to take up this particular question. Uh, but uh, the question is on uh, somebody got uh, the feedback that the research methodology followed is not proper. So I would request that participant to be in touch with the Dr. Ajay Chawan because it's. I think it's going to be a lengthy answer and it may not be possible without looking at the objectives. Yes, sir. Uh, and the entire paper. So it is very difficult to answer. uh then we have one uh, question also uh, it is asking for the tico literature review i think sonali uh, again later on will uh, be able to answer your query uh, meanwhile i have posted a google form in the chat box uh, kindly uh, fill that feedback form and uh, uh, before we proceed to next session uh, let me uh, request uh, dr uh, thrupti almola director of narmada college of management to propose a vote of thanks it's over to you madam thank you dr tejas uh dr rajay kumar ji a very very exhaustive and extensive content covered so very lucidly uh, that uh, the best of researchers and the smallest of researchers are the newcomers who could you know come at par to go step by step into the research uh, making of a good research paper so uh, but also you put forth the point that doing research and writing a research is not as lucid uh and it requires a lot of content a lot of intent and a lot of contemporary reading and there is where i believe we need to reflect ourselves as researchers on how much do we read on the contemporary elements uh thank you for taking us to the very importance of um, writing a good introduction writing a good uh, identifying the right research gap posing the right research questions and how the conclusion and the introduction should match wherein it brings out another new piece of knowledge adding to the knowledge pool so all that was very lucidly and very regressively done and the weakest link i find in most of the phd students doing a research which you highlighted so very well was about creating a review bank we fail in creating a review bank and therefore the substance of research that we do or the substance that we put in our paper is missing because of these connections we need to make with what has been done and what needs to be done and we act as a contributor there so uh, once again on behalf of all the host institutions namely narmada college of management the tolani motwani institute of management studies the som lalit institute of business management and the universal business school sydney australia as well as the participants the researchers the faculty members from all over the country who have participated and we should begin sir as respect paid to you and in acknowledgement of the time and effort you have made to present such a crisp Uh, in information to all of us we should therefore commit ourselves to doing good research and i'm sure sir you'll be available uh, on the mails we won't disturb you so much on the phone but kindly be available on the mail for all our researchers to uh, you know to take your help on improving our research quality yeah. thank you so very much on behalf of everybody here thank you thank you thank uh, you madam i think uh, with your permission we'll take a break of set uh, 20 minutes uh, by the time dr kyu joins us so uh, Uh, madam shall we uh, break for say 10 15 minutes okay yes yes fine